the, the heart is to meet with small business owners and entrepreneurs and hear from them uh, what they've been doing throughout the crisis, how they've been staying positive, how they're being resourceful. And today we're with Sammy and Cody from the Fat Hen in Seattle. Tell us about your business. So uh, your business is the Fat Hen. You guys are there now. You know, in my opinion, it's like uh, Europe meets the girl next door. You come in and you're able to sit down, have a nice meal. Uh, we do house-made pastries, really great coffee, Benedict, egg bakes. Yeah crafty little fun things. Um, we're very well known in the area. People love the atmosphere. They love the service. They love the food. And, you know, us and our staff work really hard to, you know, maintain this as a place for people to come and unwind. Yeah. Yeah. And, and having been in, in our work together through System 6 Bookkeeping um, and having an office here in the neighborhood and getting a chance to come in quite frequently, um, I know how delicious it is. And I, I would tell anyone listening, go to Yelp, go to Google <laughs> places, visit yeah. you guys on Instagram. It's fantastic. Um, and it, from what I remember, it's super tight quarters. It's a small, intimate setting. Tables are bumped up right next to each other. And so uh, switch gears and talk a little bit about the COVID crisis. You know, we were three months in uh, to the crisis. The shutdown has happened. Things are be opening back up in Seattle and, and around the country. You guys, super tight, intimate tables next together. How are you guys going to reopen? Yeah, I mean, that was our, our pride was how busy we were. That was like our key to success. <laughs> like, yes, they're, everybody's just piled in. Like, a line out the door, like, wait list. Out the door. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, COVID. And it's like, wow, that, that's, that's how we measure our success, for, like, quote, unquote. Mm -hmm. It's like, when we turn the, the, the place 12 times, there's just people in it all the time. So it's it kind of turned us upside down and like, okay, well, this can't be the same going forward. And we, we've got to become smaller. Wait, that doesn't work. But then I started thinking, you know, maybe we do become smaller as far as seating, but how can we become bigger? You know, because we are very important to Seattle. And we're very important to our neighborhood and the people on the street. But it's, it's like, how do we get more influence out there? How can, you know, and, and first of all, that's to go. And that's what we went to. But it's, it's like we... I started thinking we need to become like a little market. There's a lot of people that come in and they have the salmon Benedict and they're like, I like that salmon. What if they could buy our salmon by the ounce? Huh. Or, or it's like, mm -hmm. what, what if they could buy, what if they could buy anything off our menu by the ounce? And then also what if we bring in some of the products that we like so we can actually diversify our menu, but you like particular special, there's, there's the jar of this really great local product, you know, on, on the shelf there, go ahead and buy it. And so not only that, we're reaching more, we're reaching out to establish relationships with local people that make these products. And so it started to, it started to form and it started to go, wait a minute, we might become bigger, hmm. you know, when this yeah. is done. So. Yeah. The ceiling kind of could lift at this point, you know, pivoting scary, like, cause you don't know, you know, your business as, as it was. And when you're looking at totally transforming it, it can be pretty scary, but I think you have to have the open mind of like, you know, the business that you're operating within at this moment it could have some limits. Like, well, what if you take that limit away? Like take that feeling out, you know, you, you're the business owner. You have the ability to make whatever changes you need, like to take that feeling and maybe lift it a little bit higher. So when we're looking at, you know, putting in a little market bodega pantry, whatever you want to call it, um, it gives us the opportunity to reach more people without actually having to have the body sitting in the chair dining with us. We can still send ourselves home with them. There's, there's been uh, a lot in the news about uh, during the last three months, restaurants have pivoted and they've pivoted to first it's like, how do we do takeout or how do we do curbside pickup? And then a lot of news uh, negative news around the evil DoorDash or the evil delivery services and mm -hmm. the big fee they take. So just can you spend just a few seconds, like what's your idea for making a profit, staying profitable, running a good business and dealing with delivery like that? Are you, do you work with one of those services? Do you do your own delivery? Um, so we do not work with one of those services. We are actually working to develop our own in-house delivery. Mm -hmm. um, we have a system in which a, a friend of ours is helping us put together. And, you know, so far it's been a slow ball rolling. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah. I mean, for us, it creates another avenue to create a job for somebody, yeah. you know, who might need it, whether how our, our business shifts, we want to bring everybody back if we can, but their role might be different. We need to open up opportunities to us. That's a way to open up an opportunity for some shifts for some people, you know, running delivery for us. Yeah. So you guys, yeah. you, you're pivoting uh, in the last three months. You're, you're doing takeout. Uh, there's this bodega market concept that you're, you're pushing out. And, and now we're hearing, you know, there's protests, there's Black Lives Matter. You guys are obviously, you closed for the day today, which means there's no revenue. Take a moment and describe how is the COVID crisis and now the protests, how has that impacted the business? Now you're, you're still there. You're still open. That's good, right? You're yeah. surviving. Mm -hmm. There's a lot yeah. to be thankful for there. But how yeah. has the crisis impacted the business and impacted you guys personally? I mean, I think initially and obviously, um, the you know, with the Black Lives Matter protests, I mean, things slowed down, but um, that's understandable and that may, and it makes sense. And it is, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing because people are using their voices. So, you know, we're sitting there and yeah, sorry, but people are out there, you know, conveying a message of, of things that need to change. Mm -hmm. And so it got us convicted to, to try to figure out what we can do. You know, obviously there's promotions um, that, that you try to push your business with, but it's like, yeah, we're in a crisis and yeah, we could do a promotion and come and get stuff, but it's like, how can we, maybe we can, we can make a difference with this promotion. Mm. Right. Maybe, maybe it's like, yeah, we can promote the restaurant. We can promote a cause we can, and we want to be part of the change. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, uh, you know, for the business, sure. It slowed it down a little bit, but we always see a little bit of a rebound from that too. It may be slow for a day, but the following day, like typically they're there in force. <laughs> you know, for us. Didn't like, eat out yesterday so or the, let's go out and. Yeah, exactly. I'm not necessarily, you know, worried in that sense. You know, I, I'm an advocate for change myself. Like be out there, use your voice, like put, put it out there. And you know what, when you're ready to eat, we'll be here for you. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I think yes. uh, adding to that, I think, I think in a, in a restaurants in general, before the COVID crisis and before the, the protests and the Black Lives Matter movement, um, you know, flared up so much. I think you just have a you have a slow day, and you're running. What's going on? And you would be annoyed or aggravated. And with this, it's it's you want your business to survive, and you want to do well and and, and feed people. But also, the reason why you're slow is a lot of people are being safe. The reason you're slow is a lot of people are out there using their voices to change something that needs to change. Mm -hmm. So there is this moment where you sit there and you actually even take pride in those little breaks, and you're like, people are out there making a difference. And it's like it makes you convince too, like I said. I was like, how can I make a difference? You've mentioned uh, before this call that you guys are helping to raise funds and you want to allocate those funds to local, smaller causes, uh, local people. Tell us more about that. Uh, everybody has their role. They have a different way of facilitating, uh, helping, and, and putting out there for others. And for us, uh, we decided that we would choose a few menu items that we would donate a dollar um, of every menu item sold. So say there's 10 chicken sandwiches sold, uh, we donate a dollar from each of those chicken sandwiches and um, we donate that to a cause in which we've chosen. Pardon me. <clears throat> um, and we want it to be a small local cause. The whole idea being, you know, think globally, but act locally. Mm. The best way that we can help is if we're helping our surrounding community. That's great. Yep. That's awesome. And that's, and that's, you know, talking about small differences, small actions, not second guessing ourselves, not getting stuck on the couch and, and worrying or sounds like you guys throughout the, the crisis haven't gotten stuck, haven't just like thrown up your hands and said, there's nothing we can do. It sounds like you guys have been resourceful. You've persevered you're here we are months later you're taking action you're being generous you're so look back over the last couple of months have you guys fallen into a place where you're like depressed um, I don't know if we can go oh. on if we don't get the PPP or the EIDL like what what has the last couple of months give us a low point and a high point <laughs> Is that I a mean initially <laughs> <laughs> yeah a low point high point yeah initially it was a huge shock yeah. You know, um, 
I'd heard of this COVID thing in the news and da da da, but like it wasn't really to me at the forefront. It, it didn't seem like something that was going to turn into this, yeah. you know. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, like the game has changed. Something big is happening here. And for the way that our business is, I felt and Cody felt that it was a good idea to close so that we could assess the situation. A lot of people, you know, panic and do these like knee jerk reactions. I get it. I totally get it. You definitely have that like gut reaction of like, Oh no, no, we need to like switch and pivot fast, you know, but sometimes you need to step back a little bit and you need to see the whole picture before you make a decision as how to move forward. (laughs) And I I think honestly it it was probably a therapeutic thing because you know, closing down, quarantining, not knowing what's going to happen. The information's changing so much. Mm-hmm. You know, we're on a budget. We're eating through our savings. We're not getting paid. That was the hardest point because all that was happening. Plus, it was you're kind of losing track of what day it was, honestly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. to come in, you know, yeah, we've got to be just us by ourselves. But, it, but it's like there's something we can do. Like, you can put our energy yeah. into beating some people and doing something positive and and that's what kind of i think pulled us out i think those first couple weeks were the toughest yeah and obviously it's still tough you still got to pivot you still got to you know the news changes all the time but getting back in and and making a difference and and cooking and and seeing people and knowing you're like okay we're feeding these people and they're staying safe but that that's what that's what kind of helped and pulled us out uh as you guys you know you're pivoting and you're you're doing a great job of just making it work the last couple of months. Have you looked at like, man, uh, we can't survive unless we hit a certain amount of capacity. Like, are are you getting clear on numbers like that of like, we have to do X or is it still like, you know what, just we're here for the community. We're going to do what it takes. It's the two of us and we're going to figure that out soon. Yeah. Hmm. So with so much going on, um, and so much in transition with us taking some of our seating out to build in the bodega, that whole paradigm has shifted. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like looking at a new restaurant and that's how you have to look at it. I think having any kind of expectation at this point, um, I, I, I don't think I can comfortably do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the next, couple months as as we start to get closer to reopening that will definitely be something on my agenda at this point it's just getting the bodega part in making sure we're pricing that out in the right way um, and making sure that we're staffing in the right way and keeping all of those numbers in check and then once we see when we're able to open what our volume and capacity looks like I think we'll get a better idea at that point you know it's a whole new game to new yeah i think um yeah i think um like before when we come in like i said we piled them in and we knew certain numbers there were just certain numbers we knew if we hit those we're doing fine and sometimes we exceed those numbers but there was definitely a cap there was this fourth like four thousand dollar cap where we're like we we got to the point where we our efficiencies got to a point where we were like okay that's like the most efficient day we can have and we hit that several times but we could never get past that Mm-hmm. And so with this, with COVID hitting, I'm obviously me and Sam quarantining and then coming back in, I think just coming back in, it's just, we wanted some sense of normalcy. I mean, just put our energy into something, keep the business going, let, let people know we're here um, and cook. And I think at, at that point, it's like, okay, there's just normalcy. Now we've brought back a few staff members. Um, we're open a few more days and we're kind of just letting um, the guests and our the customers dictate when we expand just mm-hmm. by busyness. And I think now, now we're starting to see, okay, if we have a busy weekend and we say it about these numbers, we're keeping the lights on, mm-hmm. but the bodega came idea came and that's our, that's where we need to work into. It's like, how do we, how do we go back to making that type of revenue um, and decreasing our seating? But now the bodega, it's like, it's, it's exciting because now we don't know where the ceiling is. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, we can go back in, but like now we're going to establish new efficiencies and now we're going to see where that ceiling is. And eventually we're going to learn what it is, but it might be more. It mm-hmm. might just be more because we have a bigger reach and with our delivery system. And, and honestly, we weren't doing to go before because we weren't, obviously breakfast is very hard to do to go. Right. Eggs yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, 
we need to we needed to learn a few things about how it's being carried and packed up. Mm. And then secondly, it's if I don't think we were being efficient enough, we were too much focused on the turn and burn sort of mentality a little bit. Um, so now, you know, that's made us stop and think we need to figure out to go. We need to figure out the bodega. We need to figure out the shopping. We need to make all our stuff be available. And then, yeah, I think it's going to be exciting to see where the ceiling is after that. Right. That's wise. That's great. And that's resourceful. I mean, that's, that's you know, some of the things that, that I hope to pull out that folks listening can be inspired and encouraged by is like, there's an optimism and a hope that you guys have. There's a resourcefulness. And, and it sounds like a willingness to step into, like, I don't know what the next couple of months look like, but one foot in front of another, taking action, little actions even, mm -hmm. right? Like that we will figure it out. We're here one foot in front of the other. And that's, that's small business America. That's, I, I feel like how we're going to see things continue to turn towards the positive as we all figure out how to reopen and figure out the new normal. So thank you guys for sharing that. That's super inspiring. You know, we've had a glimpse into your entrepreneurial spirit and, and the way that you guys have survived the last three months. I, I want to hear uh, from each of you, uh, is there a life lesson or a life principle that you'd want to share? You know, you've got the microphone, you can share this short video when it's done out uh, to your community and, and what would you share? What life lesson or life principle? I think, um, this whole experience as we just talked about resourcefulness, you know, but I think, you know, it's being resourceful. Like we've had to be on a budget, you know, the restaurant is on a budget. Um, and I think you sit back and you figure out what you can do and how you can act, even if it's as small as we had to shave our dog. Like, you know, we take our dog into be groomed and you're like, wait a minute. We, you know, we have mm. to figure out how to do this ourselves. Yeah. And so we, me and Sam on the balcony are shaving our dog, That's you know, awesome. and it's like, it, 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 it falls into like, what do we have in the house? What can we eat? What are we being resourceful mm. like with? And that stopped us and it made us pivot our concept and it made us rethink everything. Like, are, how are we seeing things differently? And I think that dovetails into, you know, with the COVID crisis and with the Black Lives Matter, I think looking and seeing what you can do, stopping and, and just taking a moment to get off the hamster wheel and saying to yourself, what's something I can change, whether it's something in your business or it's something in your heart, whether it's something inside, like, you know, from this point on, I'm going to change this. From this, from this day going forth, this is not going to be a thing, or I'm going to be, I'll look at this as a positive, or I'm going to try to make an impact, or I'm going to act. I'm not going to second guess myself. And I think that's the personal lesson. I think it's stopping, you know, pivoting, being resourceful, and, and then examining yourself. That's good. Jamie, I, what I about would you? agree. I mean, I definitely agree with him. I, I also think for myself, it's a matter of knowing that none of us are in this alone, and that really and truly, the way that we get through anything is with each other. You know, being there to support each other in whatever ways that we can, um, even if that's just holding space in your heart and your mind to somebody. Um, and just knowing that as you support those around you, they will come around and support you as well. It's, it's all about the one thing that everybody desires in this world, which is, you know, love. Love and acceptance and compassion and just having that for each other. I think that's something that we've gotten so far away from. We've gotten so far away from the idea of loving each other as a community and as neighbors. You know, it's all, a lot of it has become about, you know, the I and the me. You know, I need this, I want this, I deserve this, mm. you know. Um, Preach it, sister. But it. the way that we can do the best uh, for ourselves is to open ourselves up to each other. You know, and it like the things that I'm seeing in our community, I'm really proud of, and I might cry for a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's just really important to me to to see everybody pulling for each other in these little little ways. It's incredibly beautiful, and I think it's so easy to get focused on the negative. All of the bombardment that you get from the news and the media and all of these things about these horrible, horrible things that are happening. It's all you hear. It's all you see. And it's so easy to become terrified and lock yourself away um, because you're scared or close yourself off because you're scared. 
but truly the way to get through that fear is to really look at the beauty behind all of these things that's happening behind the scenes that's not put on the forefront you know and people are beautiful and this world is beautiful and there are beautiful things happening in it and be part of that beauty push it forward be there for each other gosh thank you thank you amen and you guys are <laughs> examples of those little steps little actions pushing it forward not being afraid not getting stuck on your couch, uh, pulling the curtains and, and, oh, woe is us. I mean, you guys are out there doing it, living right. it. And, and I'm sure there's thousands, millions of small business owners like you guys that are baby steps, one foot in front of another. Yep. And that, I hope that as folks here, uh, you guys share today, there's just a little bit of hope, encouragement, inspiration. <laughs> I really appreciate our time. I, I, I'd ask here as we wrap up, any any last thing you want to share before we go? Oh, man. Yeah, I just, I just think people look at, there's so much bad going on, but look at what's going on or think and try to think like of what good things are going on. There's so many things right now that mm -hmm. are just in little towns and small business owners that are doing good things that would just encourage anybody if they could see that. But we, can't, we don't typically see all that. We see all the bad. Right. And I think honestly coming together, you know, if we all would just work together, we can, we have all, we have most of the answers. We don't have the answers mm -hmm. by ourselves, but together we have a lot of the answers and we can, we can be resourceful and, and come together and change the world really honestly. That's great. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Thank you guys. Uh, I look forward to visiting with y'all together uh, yeah, in the restaurant, see you seeing out, the man. new concept and taking home some hot sauce. And we already yeah. missed the, yeah. uh, we found That'll local be beans. Yeah, man. We yeah. take coffee beans, hot sauce, it, you know, any and all of it. So, oh yeah, all the good stuff. Come get yeah. your chicken sandwiches, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there's good Thank food you. here, but there are there's not a fat hen. So. <laughs> <laughs>